To steal a line from Johnny Cash, Gemma, you wonder why I always dress in black? Well, today, that's because that's what everyone else was doing. A blackout at Bronco Stadium. Former Dallas Cowboys great Roger Staubach once said, the best teams have consistency and chemistry. That adage is proving true for the Broncos basketball squad, who are off to their best start in nine years. Now sports with sports director Paul Gerke. The last time the Boise State basketball team was this good was the 1994-95 campaign. Back then, Toy Story was the top movie in the U.S. eBay didn't exist yet, and the NHL was mired in a lockout. Well, I guess some things never change. Boise State, believe it or not, lost the most starting position players of any team in the country. It's impossible to replace all those guys. It's not just Kellen Moore. In yesterday's press conference, Coach Pete read the minds of all of Bronco Nation when he said that this year has had a different feel to it. As odd as it's been without the high-scoring affairs of Broncos past, some things have stayed the same like a postseason win in Las Vegas. We're going to be back with full highlights from that game coming up in sports, but real quick, I want to share something with you. Chandler Cook's mom, a tight end for the Broncos, just came up to me and said, make sure you say on the air, the Boises are back in town. There will be much worse puns on the other side of the break. I'm 270, 6'4", bench press 345. Nick is just a monster. Nick Edenfield is a lineman at Columbia High School. Assistant coach Lee Moore may prefer to call him a monster, but he responds to other names too. Ginger. Big Red. Ginger Fireball. Superstar, Hollywood. Primo. Angry Redhead. He takes it pretty lightly. He just, he's pretty good with it. I love the team, the team sport. I mean, it wouldn't be the same without the guys I'm playing with. And Nick's fellow Wildcats wouldn't be the same without him. Laughing off nicknames is just one of his strengths. Tossing around a 500 pound tractor tire oh. is another. The tire, he flipped it every, he flipped it every over the summer. So it was, the tire was his baby. Always gotta do something extra that no one else is doing. We basically just Googled workouts for football players, for linemen. We got a, the biggest tire we could find and just got a sledgehammer and started working out. Oh yeah, there's a sledgehammer too. When he's not wailing on wheels, Nick plays both offensive and defensive line for Columbia. He rarely misses a down, earning respect from his teammates and attention from Division I schools. Becoming a D1 football player is an uncommon feat, but the way Nick got to that point is rarer still. The Tallahassee, Florida native moved to Idaho 12 years ago. He'd never played a snap of football until he was a freshman, and he was homeschooled until his senior year. The transition to the classroom was fairly easy. Well, you got to wait for the rest of the class. <laughs> Homeschooled, you're just by yourself doing what you're, what you're doing, getting it done as fast as you can and move it on. But the transition to the gridiron wasn't as simple. Nick made it to Columbia's varsity team midway through his freshman year. Then in his sophomore season, Edenfield's grandma came all the way from South Carolina just to see him play. And I think it was our third game this season. We benched him, just wasn't having good performance. Uh, his grandma showed up, it was a big deal, and he went home and moped, and his grandma said, you know, she's old school, and said, you're going to mope or you're going to do something about it? Definitely not my best moment. <laughs> the changing point was then, I, we played Wood River, and wasn't supposed to grab a guy this way, but he grabbed him by the neck and slammed him to the ground, and I'm cheering, just, yes, everyone, you can't do that, and I'm like, well, we've been waiting for this attitude to show up. Edenfield's newly developed mean streak paid dividends on the field, but his demeanor off the field remained the same. You couldn't ask for a better kid to coach. Yes, sir, no, sir. Yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. That's definitely something I was raised with down south. That's a must, so <laughs> kind of carried that with me. Everybody's different, but he's, he's extraordinarily different in a good way. You wouldn't care if he asked to marry your daughter. You'd say yes, just marry her. I'd say I, I don't know if I'll ever get another one to be able to coach that way. <laughs> That's how we do it in Idaho, baby. Let's go. Boise State defeated Washington 28-26 on Saturday to become the first team to ever win three straight Las Vegas Bowl appearances. We really enjoy Las Vegas. While the Broncos hoisted the Mako Bowl trophy, 
standout Washington running back, Bishop Sankey, was relegated to carrying off the game's most valuable player award, marking the first time it's ever been granted to a member of the losing team. You know, the MVP trophy doesn't really mean as much if you come out the, a loser. The Huskies nearly found a way to turn Sankey's effort into a W, but Broncos kicker Michael Fresina nailed a 27-yard field goal with 1.16 left to put Boise State on top for good. It was the most clutch kick that Fresina could ever remember making. Every kicker's dream to hit a game-winning field goal, and for this one to come in my last collegiate game, uh, you know, last game of my career, I couldn't ask for anything more. Quarterback Joe Southwick turned in an efficient performance, passing for 264 yards and two touchdowns, while avoiding throwing an interception for the fourth straight game. I know I, I could play at this level. Um, it's just a lot of work, a lot of moving parts, you know, we're working together to fit the puzzle together. Um, and, you know, the last three or four games, it's really showed. Linebacker J.C. Percy capped off his stellar senior season with 17 tackles, the second highest total in Las Vegas Bowl history. To be able to go out with all these seniors um, as, as bowl champions, four-time bowl champions, um, I think it's great, and I'm so I'm so proud to be a part of this program. Big plays all day. Be there, the Broncos will be short 23 seniors when they face the Huskies again in the opener next year. Washington will lose just 12 players to graduation. Despite Saturday's defeat, Coach Steve Sarkeesian thinks his young team is headed in the right direction. I believe we're going to win these close ones late in the ball game, and and we will be that 9, 10, 11 win team here you know, sooner rather than later. They'll come ready to play, you know, and, and we got nine months to get ready for them. Now sports with sports director Paul Gerke. At 9-2, and two, the Boise State basketball team is out to its best start in nearly a decade. The Broncos are 5-0 and at home, but they haven't been pounding the floor at Taco Bell Arena very often lately. BSU played just its second home game in 36 days this afternoon, facing Corbin University, an NAIA member out of Oregon. The Broncos had a considerable size advantage over the Warriors, and they made use of it. Iggy Hadzio-Merovich, Aussie, Aussie, Aussie! Oi, oi, oi! There we go, the hoop and the harm. Broncos out to a 4-0 lead. Then more points in the paint. Anthony Drimmick feeds Ryan Watkins. He can't finish the floater, but he scoops up his own rebound and scores. Boise State opened the game on a 14-0 run. Derek Marks, make me a bicycle clown! He only scored six points. The first time this year he didn't crack double digits, but he didn't need to, thanks to Jeff Aloriaga, who hit 10 threes, including eight in the first half alone, becoming the first player in Mountain West history to sink 10 in the game. He's also the first in the entire NCAA to do it this season. His 30 points carried the Broncos to an easy 105-49 win. Kenny Buckner recorded his first career double-double, scoring 23 and chipping in 10 boards. The women's team was not as fortunate in New York today. Boise State fell 87-48 to Syracuse. Lauren Lenhart led the Broncos with 11 points and 7 rebounds. BSU now 6-6 six six on the year. The Steelheads picked up their second straight road win, beating the Wranglers 3-2 in Las Vegas. David DeCastroza tallied the game winner late in the third. Now, the Steve's Hometown Toyota NFL Wrap-Up. Let's make like Tupac's hologram and have one last wrap. Week 17 of the NFL schedule, Cowboys and Redskins playing for the last postseason slot and the East Division crown, RG3. Yeah, that's why he's more of a pro bowler than Pete Weber. I'll give you a second on that one. 14-7 skins after three. Then the other Washington Rook goes to work. Alfred Morris, 33 carries, 200 yards, three touchdowns, telling the Cowboys to ride off into the sunset. Redskins take a 28-18 after starting three and six. Washington wins the East, and they're going to the playoffs, facing Seattle next Sunday night. Chuck Pagano made his return from leukemia to coach the 10-5 Colts against the Texans today. Andrew Luck hooks up with Kobe Fleener for a touch. It's like the Beatles said, all you need is luck. 7-zip Indy. The Texans were up 16-14 in the third, kicking to Deji Kareem. Big gulps, eh? Well, see you later. 101 yards to the house, and that turned out to be the game-winning score. Indy upsets Houston 28-16, denying the Texans a first-round bye. The Seahawks were jostling for position in the NFC bracket in their finale against the Rams. St. Louis could finish above 500. Check out Austin Pettis. He's a fan of the Goo Goo Dolls. We're going to let it slide. 
His fourth TD grab of the year makes it 7-3. He was tied at 13 apiece in the closing moments of the fourth. Even Dennis the Menace couldn't stop Mr. Wilson this season. Russell Wilson, the Hawks QB, scampers in for the game winner. Seattle takes a 2013. Quentin Michael, nine total tackles in the loss. The Vikings could quench the final wild card spot in the NFC with a win over the Packers. Adrian Peterson could still break the single season rushing record. Looks like he's got this running back thing pretty much figured out, eh? AP went for 199 yards, coming just nine yards short of the season record. Minnesota built the 13-0 lead, but back come the pack. Aaron Rodgers to Greg Jennings, 13-7 Vikes. Rodgers threw four touchdown passes on the afternoon, but it wasn't enough. Minnesota wins on that Blair Walsh field goal as time expires. The Vikings are going to the playoffs. They'll play the Cheeseheads again next week. Elsewhere in the league, a few other former Broncos made the box scores. Doug Martin rushed for a buck 24 and his 11th touchdown as Tampa Bay upset Atlanta. Former D-line buddies Shea McClellan and Billy Wynn each recorded a tackle in the Bears' victory over the Lions and the Browns' loss to the Steelers. Woo! Woo! No, no. You ready for the playoffs? Ready. All Are right. you ready? I'll see you next weekend. Some more to say even next weekend. All right, <laughs> well, stay with us. We'll have your final look at weather right after the break.